give a new life to your favorite t-shirts by turning them into a t-shirt quilt. I'll show you how easy it is in this step-by-step -step video. Hi, I'm Angela Walters. To get started on your t-shirt quilt, gather t-shirts that have sentimental value. Don't worry if they don't all match in color. The memories they represent are the most important part of this quilt. 16 shirts is the perfect number for a small lap quilt. It'll give you four rows with four shirts in each row. You could use more or less depending on how many shirts you have or how large you want the quilt to be. Roughly cut out the front of the shirt with scissors. The cuts don't have to be smooth. We'll straighten them out later. Since t-shirts are usually made out of knit material, they can be stretchy and a little tricky to work with. To help make cutting and sewing the shirts easier, we're gonna use fusible interfacing. Use an iron to bond the interfacing to the back of the shirt. Be sure to read the manufacturer's instructions for specific iron temperatures. Now that the shirts are stable and easier to work with, it's time to trim the shirts. It doesn't matter what size they are as long as they're all the same. Try to center the graphic or design as much as possible so it doesn't get cut out of the block. For my quilt, I'm gonna cut the blocks 12 inches square. Using a t-shirt ruler like this or a clear plastic template will help you see where the design will be once the shirt is cut. I'm using a rotary cutter, ruler, and mat to carefully cut out the block, but you can use scissors. Once the blocks are cut, it's time to decide how you wanna lay out the quilt. Arrange the blocks in rows until you're happy with the design. There is no wrong way to make your t-shirt quilt. Here, I'm just using four blocks. Line up the edges of your blocks and pin them together to prevent any of the layers from slipping while sewing. Sew the blocks together with a half inch seam allowance. If you have a walking foot for your sewing machine, be sure to use it. It will help feed all the layers evenly as you sew. Press the seams open. Ironing them flat will make the quilting process easier. Now line up the seams so that all the points are matching and pin. Take it to the machine and sew, again with a half inch seam allowance. Make sure those seams are sewn open. Press everything nice and flat and your quilt top is finished. Now we have to turn those blocks into a quilt by, guess what, quilting it. Pick out a fabric for the backing. Cut it at least two inches bigger than your t-shirt quilt top on all sides. With the backing face down, add a layer of batting and then place the t-shirt quilt top face up. Base the layers of the quilt together using safety pins. Now it's time for my favorite part, the machine quilting. We'll use that walking foot once again to quilt straight lines. Place the quilt sandwich under the needle and begin stitching. I like to start in the center of the quilt and work outwards, but you can start wherever you like. See how the walking foot helps feed the thick layers of fabric through the machine? Stitch your way back and forth across the quilt, avoiding thicker emblems or heavy paint. Quilting through those areas is no fun. Continue until you've quilted the whole thing. You're almost done. All that's left is to bind the raw edges of your quilt. First, trim the edges of your quilt sandwich so that they're straight. Choose your binding fabric and cut it out into strips using a rotary cutter and ruler or scissors. I cut mine to two and a quarter inches wide. On the end of one strip, draw a 45 degree angle from one corner to the opposite side. Then, at the machine, lay the strip face down on a second strip to form a right angle. Sew carefully along the line. Trim a quarter inch away from the sewn line. Repeat with the rest of the strips to make one long strip of binding that's as long as the four sides of your quilt. Using a hot iron, press each seam to one side, then press the whole strip in half, giving yourself a nice crisp edge. Open one end of the binding and trim it at a 45 degree angle, then iron the edge in a quarter inch. Now it's time to attach it to the quilt. With the quilt under the machine foot, place the open edge of the binding along the edge of the quilt, open it up and stitch down about an inch. Stop stitching. Fold the binding over, lining it up at the raw edge, and then stitch again about two inches from where you started. Stitch a quarter inch around the quilt with the raw edge of the binding lined up with the edge of the quilt. When you approach a corner, stop sewing about a quarter inch away from the edge. Rotate the quilt so that the next side of the quilt is ready to sew. Fold the binding up so that it is even with the next side of the quilt. Then fold it back down on itself to form a nice, neat, mitered tuck. Continue sewing the binding all around the edges of the quilt. Once you get close to the beginning, trim the end of the binding, tuck it into the opening, and stitch the rest of the way.
Now you're almost done. We just need to attach the other side of the binding, then you can finally cuddle under your special quilt. Flip the quilt over and pull the binding around to the other side, starting at a corner. Sew a scant quarter inch away from the fold. This way the binding will look good on both sides. When you get about an inch from the corner, stop sewing, leaving the needle in the down position. Fold the binding around the corner, pin it or hold it in place to continue sewing. Pivot the quilt while the needle is about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. This way your corner will look good on both sides. Can you see how neat it looks? And continue working your way around the quilt. Once the binding is on, all that's left to do is enjoy your newly finished quilt. Thanks for watching! To get the free pattern for this project, supplies, and more expert instruction, be sure to click the I in the top right hand corner of this video.